Hello everybody, my name is Maurice Recruit. I'm a researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence and I want to present to you today our recent work about spinning icons, introducing a novel SSV PBCI paradigm based on rotation. So what is SSVEP? SSVEP stands for Steady State Visually Evoked Potential and it is actually a brain response which is evoked when you are looking at uh, visual stimuli which are flickering in a certain frequency. Uh, you can measure this um, potential at the back of your head and your, at your primary visual cortex, the occipital region. And if you imagine this um, checkerboard pattern now be oscillating in a certain frequency, let it be 3 Hz, you're looking at it. If you measure the electroencephalogram at the back of the head, transfer it into the frequency domain, you can see a peak at stimulus frequency and at its harmonics. So if it is a stimulus frequency of 3, it would be 6, 9, 12 and so on. And uh, yeah, by doing so, you can actually realize brain-computer interfaces because you measure brain activity and can detect at which stimulus a person was looking at. Um, the advantages of this technology are that it's quite well researched, robust, uh, it has a high classification accuracy and it requires only very little and actually sometimes only no training. So well, what is the problem with it? Uh, if you see this video about the state of the art currently, um, there is a person sitting uh, you can see it on the left wearing an EEG and looking at a screen with a keyboard where all the characters are flickering different frequencies and he manages to type quite fast. Here you can see high speed BCI uh, with this technology but I think the problem is obvious that if you imagine you had to type your paper for this conference with such a technology you would probably go crazy because it's flickering all the time, it's annoying, it's causing a lot of visual stress and fatigue and uh, currently researchers try to tackle this problem by disguising um, this uh, flickering into, um, into motion. So we have here a paper of Young et al. where they tried to create four novel motion-based paradigms for steady-state visually work potentials. You can see a flipping stick here on the left, rotating uh, circles, uh, which actually also managed to induce SSVEPs. But those concepts are quite abstract. So Imagine it to, to use it in a UI, you are quite limited to how you can use it. Um, and we therefore uh, propose uh, the method of spinning icons. So icons rotating around the vertical axis in a certain frequency, therefore hopefully inducing SSVPs. And we claim that this causes less visual stress or fatigue. And of course you are more flexible in your design because you can basically use every icon you can imagine. We wanted to answer two research questions with our work. The first was, uh, so can spinning icons or images be used to evoke SSVPs at all? And the second question was, um, if they can, so are they perceived less visually fatiguing in comparison to standard or motion-based SSVPs? In order to test this, we selected four different icons which are frequently used in work settings and transferred them into spinning SSVPs. We furthermore designed four SSMVPs, so um, SSVPs based on motion and also based on related work. And we compared both of those stimuli to a standard checkerboard stimulus in an application-oriented scenario and evaluated them based on the classification accuracy and subjective perceived visual fatigue. So this is how the movement-based stimuli look like and as you can see they try to mimic uh, certain UI elements, like for example maximizing or minimizing button, an arrow for navigation, uh, settings wheel, a close uh, X for closing applications, and this is the control standard checkerboard stimulus. All of those stimuli are oriented on those two related works mentioned below. For the spinning icons, as I said, we decided to use icons which are frequently used in a working environment, and we chose PDF, Excel, Outlook and Word as icons, and as a control, we had the checkerboard spinning as well. Uh, I have to mention that Excel, Outlook and Word are, of course, icons for the property of the Microsoft Corporation. And this is an independent publication which is neither affiliated with nor authorized, sponsored or approved by the Microsoft Corporation. Uh, the experimental setup looked as follows. We had an EEG headset from the GTEC company, the G Nautilus Research headset with 500 Hz sampling frequency. We selected 11 electrodes, where only one electrode, the OZ, was actively used to measure SSVP. All the others were used for common average referencing, so to filter out the background uh, activity and noise. 
we designed our stimuli in three different frequencies, 7.5, 10, and 13 hertz. We had 20 participants where two had to be excluded afterwards, unfortunately, due to problems during the recording. Um, we had 10 stimuli to test, three frequencies each, so this resulted in 30 trials per participant. And the classification was done offline, so we did a canonical correlation analysis based on filter banks. The procedure looked follows. So first the target stimulus was randomly selected from all available stimuli and displayed in a random target frequency for five seconds. Participants were asked to remember the target stimulus and uh, find it in a grid of uh, all the other stimuli which was presented afterwards. Uh, they had to look at the stimulus until the screen changed again and we verified with an eye tracking system that the participants were actually looking at the correct stimulus. All the other stimuli you might have noticed were not flickering in the target uh, frequency, or maybe you did not notice, but that was the case. Uh, so, for example, if the target stimulus was displayed in 10 Hz, all the other stimuli were randomly chosen to be displayed either in 7.5 or 13 Hz. Coming to the results. Uh, a lot of numbers and tables. First, I have to clarify that we did not really use the classification accuracy, but rather the balanced accuracy. Uh, for our results because the amount of classifications for the positive condition and the negative condition is uneven with a prevalence of one-third due to three different target frequencies and therefore the standard classification accuracy is a suboptimal way of evaluating the classifier as the negative condition has a disproportionately higher effect on the accuracy. And as the balanced accuracy was used as the true positive rate plus the true negative rate divided by two and this resulted for uh, true positive rate, true negative rate, and the balanced accuracy uh, uh, at a level of one third mean classification and chance level because we had three different classification, three different frequencies in which the stimuli were presented. So in this table, the most important part is here the average for all the stimuli uh, of the balanced accuracy. You can see our control stimulus, the checkerboard at the top, which produced. Um, uh, 7.2 balanced accuracy, so 72% balanced accuracy. All the motion-based um, stimuli were uh, significantly above or were above chance level, at least. And uh, luckily, or which was a great <laughs> success, all the spinning stimuli were all above chance level. As you can see, they scored comparable to our checkerboard stimulus even, and some even better with 75% for the PDF icon. We uh, evaluated the significance of the results with the binomial test with a high null hypothesis being accuracy at chance level. So we just wanted to see if those balanced classification accuracies are significantly above chance level. And the significance level of 0 0.05 was used here. What you can see that for most of our spinning stimuli, actually, they were significantly above chance level. Um, for the motion based, it looked a little worse, but still quite well. And what we can see if we highlight now the cases in which our spinning stimuli did not um, score significantly above chance level, we can see that it is always 7.5 Hertz, which causes problems and not only in the spinning, but also in the motion based condition and even in our control condition for the checkerboard stimulus. So we can more or less conclude that or discuss that there seems to be a problem or seems to have been a problem with the presentation of the 7.5 Hertz stimulus in general. About the results concerning visual fatigue, uh, we handed out a questionnaire to the participants after the experiment where they had to rate on a scale from 1 to 5, uh, 1 for extremely fatiguing and 5 to not fatiguing at all, how they perceived the stimuli and what we can see from the values which are again all presented here for all participants, that the spinning, ic uh, spinning icons produced subjectively less visual fatigue than the motion-based icons. Having a look at significance again, we used a sign test where any value smaller or equal to 3 was counted as a failure and any greater as a success with a significance level of 0.05 again. And we can see that the spinning stimuli almost all managed to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, icon checkerboard did not. But surprisingly, also our comparison, our control stimulus managed to do so. And this was yeah, a kind of surprise to us because our... A uh, hypothesis in the beginning was that those kind of things are annoying to look at, and in our comparison, uh, it actually uh, it seemed to that this wasn't the case. 
Summing up the work, where we presented a novel paradigm for SSVP BCIs based on icons rotating around the vertical axis, which we call spinning icons or spinning SSVPs. We wanted to answer the research question, can spinning icons be used to evoke SSVPs in general or at all? And our classification accuracy is around 70% and uh, uh, tests on the significance clearly state, yes, so you can do it with this kind of um, paradigm. About the second research questions, if those spinning icons are perceived less visually fatiguing in comparison to standard emotion-based um, SSVEPs, we can say yes, uh, it was the case in comparison to motion-based SSVEPs, but surprisingly our control stimulus was perceived equally or on the same level of visual fatigue as our spinning icons. So we need some further investigation into this in the future. Uh, speaking about future, future work uh, consists for us, of course, in testing those spinning SSVPs in an online application scenario, and we would also like to investigate the effect of different icons on the SSVP. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much, and I will be happy to answer your questions now.